By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And in today's episode, I have another Fallen Empire only battle for you. And uh, these matches were played during a Fallen Empire constructed tournament. So if you want to look back at the other games that I played in the group stage, you can click on the info card that's appearing right now. So far, I've won one match and I've lost one match. And this is my third match against Gideon. And Gideon is playing with a mono green Thalit deck. So that means probably a lot of fog effects and a lot of tokens. Now, I am still playing with my deck, the Unlikely Alliance, built around the card Homerid Spawning Bed. Um, if you'd like to go straight to the games, you can check the description below, click on the timestamp, that will take you directly to game number one. If you want to see the deck deck first, I have pictures of both decks, um, just stick around because we're going to that right now. We're going to start with Gideon's deck. Let's take a look at, oh no, Talits. And here we see the mono green deck by Gideon and, um, well, what can I say? It's your basic Thalit deck. So what's interesting here to note is the Fungal Bloom. Now remember, we're playing Fallen Empires only. So that means that there's no enchantment removal in this format. So as soon as Gideon has a Fungal Bloom on the board, there's really nothing I can do. Now, why am I mentioning the Fungal Bloom? Well, the Fungal Bloom is an enchantment for two, two green. And when it comes into play, you can pay another two green and you can do this multiple times and you can put a spore counter on target fungus. And um, interesting to note here is that he can use his fungal bloom to put spore counters on almost all his creatures because the majority, the uh, thorn thalite is, is a fungus, the thalite devourer is a fungus, the feral thalite is a fungus, the normal one one thalites are funguses. And the spore flower is also a fungus. Now, spore flower is quite interesting because f with spore flower, you can remove three spore counters and then you get a fog effect. So if he has fungal bloom and spore flower on the board, he kind of has his very own fog machine. And he also plays with uh, four spore clouds, talking about fog. So spore clouds are kind of the fox from fallen empires. And what they can do, um, they read like tap all uh, blocking creatures and no creatures deal any combat damage this turn and creatures don't untap during the next upkeep or sorry the next untap step so that means if i play if i attack with everything and Gideon plays a fungal bloom not only does he not receive any damage all my creatures remain tapped during the next turn as well so they don't untap so spore cloud is a very powerful fog effect and that's probably why it's not one green but two green and one um, what's also interesting to note here is that most of his creatures uh, work with, of course, spore counters. So, for example, I think the Thorn Tally can be very powerful in this matchup. Thorn Tally is a 2-2 creature for 3, and during your upkeep you can put a spore counter on the Thally, and when you remove 3 spore counters, it can deal 1 damage to any target. Now, this may seem as a very weak card, but you have to imagine... I am anticipating a lot of standstills because of this constant fog effect of Gideon. So he's going to have a lot of time. Then when he has his fungal bloom and a lot of mana, he can produce a lot of spore counters. Then each three spore counters equals a damage. So he can start shooting all my creatures down and eventually also he can start shooting me down. So I think Thorn Talit is a very strong card in this matchup. Another card that I really want to point out is the Thelonite Druid. Now Thelonite Druid is a 1-1 one, one for three. Uh, which is not as strong, but its ability is very strong. For one green and one, and you can tap it, you need to sacrifice a creature, and then all your forests become two, three creatures. In other words, what he can do is he can wait for his Thalits to have cre created a 1-1 one, one Suproling creature, and he can then sacrifice that Suproling, and then he can attack with all his forests. So, basically... When you're playing against a deck like this deck, like a, like a traditional Thali deck that this deck is, what you want to do is you just want to deal as much damage at the start of the game as possible. You want to play as fast as possible. Because as soon as Gideon gets his, um, you know, his fog machine going and he has his tokens going, then every turn that the game is in a standstill is actually in the advantage of Gideon because he's going to get more tokens. He's going to deal more damage with Thorntallied. He's going to activate his Fungal Bloom. 
He's going to, I don't know, use his night soils to make even more little tokens. He's going to eventually use his um, Thelonite Druid to attack with an army of forests. So it's never good to play passively against these decks. You need to play aggressively. This is a very, this is really a deck that wants to drag the game on and on and on and eventually win. It's very grindy. So that's actually my concern since my deck is pretty slow as well. Uh, talking about my deck, let's take a look at my deck again, the Unlikely Alliance. And here we see my deck again. So I'm still playing with the Unlikely Alliance in this tournament. Now, if you want to have an extensive deck deck, so if you really want to know what this deck is about, there's a card popping up right now. I suggest you go back to game number one, the first match I played in a tournament, because in the uh, deck deck section of that video, I really take my time to explain all the big ideas behind this deck. So now just to kind of refresh your memory, basically what I want to do is I want to play big creatures like Homerid Warrior for one blue and four, or I want to uh, play uh, Deep Spawn uh, for eight mana, and then I want to sec that to my Homerid Spawning Bat. So Homerid Spawning Bat is an enchantment that reads, uh, pay two blue and one, sacrifice a blue creature, get one one Kamarit tokens equal to the casting cost of the blue creature. So if the blue creature has five casting costs, I can make five one ones. Now in combination, with the Goblin War Drums, I've got five 1-1 one, one creatures with Menace. If I sack a Deep Spawn, I've got eight. So I'm trying to create this huge army of 1-1 one, one little tokens and kind of kill my opponent. Now, it is, even in Fallen Empires, that is a pretty far-fetched tactic to go on. So that's why I've decided to splash uh, four Dwarven Catapults to try to just kill as many creatures that my opponent has uh, in the early game, and I've also decided to splash in four Darylors because Darylors are just amazingly strong creatures in Fallen Empires, and just in old school in general, for one black and three, you get a 4-4 four, four creature. So that is really, really strong. Um, I'm also playing with some key artifacts here for my deck, four Conch Horns. Now what Conch Horn does is you can you pay two to cast it, you can pay one and tap to sack it, and then you get to draw two cards and you need to put one card from your hand back on top of your library. Now, why is this so good in my deck? Um, it is really good in my deck because I'm playing with a lot of color. So I really want to draw the right color mana. So I'm hoping that by filtering my deck, uh, the conch horns will help me find the right color mana. Now, four other cards that are really important, again, especially in early game, are the IO piles. So the IO piles, one of the strongest cards in Fallen Empires, actually, two to cast, one and sec, and it can deal two damage to any target, and it's colorless damage. In other words, I can take care of all that protection from type of cards that um, I might encounter in these matchups. So this is really, in a nutshell, the deck now. Again, if you want to have a more extensive uh, deck tech on this particular deck. There are a lot of ideas behind this. I suggest you go to match number one of the Fallen Empire tournament. Uh, there will also be a link in the description below linking to that particular playlist. Okay, that's it for now. Without further ado, let's go to the games. Let's check out game number one. Game number one, and it looks like I'm on the player played a sand silos. That's one of those blue storage lands from Fallen Empires. That means during my upkeep, you can see me doing it right now. I can put a storage counter on the land and I can also choose to untap it and then tap it for X mana. So I can take storage counters off again, in this case, to give me blue lands. Let's take a look. What's Gideon doing here? Pretty good play for him. Turn two, playing an elvish farmer, an O2 creature. And during the upkeep of Gideon, you can put a Spore Counter on the Elvish Farmer, take three Spore Counters off, get a Thalit Token 1-1, one, one, and you can also sack a token to get gain two life. So a Thalit, uh, Suproling, I should say, to gain a life. And this is interesting. Chose to untap the Sand Silos, tapping it now for lands, playing a Conch Horn. So the Conch Horn, the artifact for two, I can pay one and sack it to draw two cards and then put one back on my library. So that's going to help me to do some card selection. Let's first take a look what Gideon is gonna do. And playing another Elvish Farmer, but more interesting, it looks like um, he's not playing a third land. So keeping my sand si silo stepped here, getting a new storage counter, tapping two, playing an IO pile, and playing another sand silos. And still no land for Gideon here. He can put the counters on exactly so both of the Elvish Farmers are ticking up. And that means that next turn, there's a Balm of Restoration by Gideon, but he has no mana to actually activate it. A Balm of Restoration, you can gain two life or prevent two damage. So that means I'm quickly going to use my Io Pile to kill the Elvish Farmer before he can make a Thali token. 
And that is very unfortunate here for Gideon. And look at that, he's just not drawing extra land. Playing a Fungal Bloom, obviously one of the stronger enchantments. But I am drawing into a Dwarven Catapult, being able to kill the Elvish Farmer. And that means that Gideon has no uh, token makers anymore. And as you can see, I'm putting some counters on my deck to kind of remind myself of using the sand silos. This is interesting, a night soil. He can activate the night soil for one to remove two creatures from target graveyard to make a 1-1 one, one, uh, Saproling. So he can remove his two elvish farmers and get a 1-1 one, one Saproling in return. And ooh, there is a Derelore 4-4 four, four creature. So hopefully I can use my Darylord to put some pressure on Gideon. And look at that, he still hasn't found more lands yet, playing another Balm of Restoration. And it looks like I'm going, at, going to play at something that's blue because I'm untapping my Sand Silos. Look at that, wow, seven. And I'm playing a Conchhorn and I'm playing a Humrid Warrior. And it looks like I'm passing turn, I guess, because I'm all tapped out. So this was a very pow powerful turn for me. And Gideon is getting deeper and deeper into trouble. He just cannot find any land. There is a Spore Flower, incredibly strong creature. A Spore Flower um, gets a Spore Counter during the upkeep. And then when you have three Spore Counters, you can take them off the Spore uh, Flower to have a Fog Effect, uh, dealing seven damage here. And of course, the Spore Flower is getting the first counter. He can use the Fungal Bloom to put an extra counter on the Spore Flower. But it looks like Gideon is simply too far behind to still win this one. It's going to be really difficult. Of course, he does have the Balm of Restoration, two of them. And on the end step, I'm using my Conchhorn. Probably going to try to dig for a Dwarven Catapult to destroy the... Spore Flower, it's only a 0-1. And the nice thing with the Conchhorn, by the way, is it gives me information so that I can decide if I want to untap my Sand Silos or not. So you can see I'm now untapping one because I already know what I'm going to draw. Attacking here for seven, that means he's on two life. Playing another Darylore, having to pay an extra black because of the Darylore ability. But I can do that, I have two swamps in play, passing turn here, and as you can see, he now has three counters on his Spore Flower. That means that next turn, he can take the three Spore Flowers off, and he can make sure that he doesn't get any damage. So he gets that Fog Effect, so no creatures deal damage in combat. So attacking with everything, so he's using the Spore Flower. And what else can I do? Playing Goblin War Drums. And then on end step, he uses the Fungal Bloom for an extra counter on the Spore Flower and of course getting an extra one during his turn. So that means that next turn he can again use his Fungal Bloom to put an extra counter on his Spore Flower and have a Fog Effect. That's exactly what he's doing right now. So maybe it's going a little bit too quick, but what he does is using his Fungal Bloom to put counters on his Spore Flower and then use the Fog Effect. But it looks like he is now running out of options. I'm going to attack again, and I think I've actually won this game, but we'll have to see. Oh, playing a Spore Cloud. And that's actually pretty good. And I'm playing another Darylore, but I don't think I can play another Darylore. Because the thing is with Darylores, you have to pay an extra black for every Darylore that you play. So I think this is actually not possible. Uh, are we going to correct this or did it just slip through? Now you have to understand we don't play with these cards often. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're going to take it back right now. I think I've, I've seen my own mistake here. So instead I'm casting a Humrid Warrior. So I'm sorry for that. My, my bad. And in the meanwhile, Gideon is putting another counter on and again... Next turn, he will be able to again use his Spore Flower. He's actually playing out another Spore Flower, so he's really counting on his Balm of Restoration or on his Night Soil. Because he can use his Night Soil for one, remove two creatures, having a 1-1 blocker for my Humrid Warrior. But wait a minute, he needs two creatures. 
So he's probably going to use his Balm of Restoration. I'm going to attack here. He's going to use the Night Soil, but I don't think he can. Oh, and then he can double block. Ah, of course, he can double block. Oh, actually, we're not doing that. I've got a Goblin War Drum, so it looks like we're both making a little mistake here. What, what has happened is that Gideon has activated his Night Soil, removed two creatures from his graveyard for a 1-1 one, one, um, Suprolling, used that Suprolling to block the Hamrit Warrior, but actually, he couldn't do that because I have... A goblin war drums on the field so he needed to double block and that would have meant that he would have lost his other spore flower so there you know it, it, it gets pretty tricky attacking here with three creatures forcing Gideon to use his spore flower that's exactly what he does so that's that fog effect again he's not taking any damage and I found another conch horn and hopefully I can use those conch horns to try to dig up a IO pile and maybe use it at the right time. But Gideon also has those two bombs of restoration. So is Gideon actually going to, to stabilize? I guess you could say he's already stabilized. And look at it, gaining more and more Thorn Talites. And Thorn Talite is a creature for three. Uh, you can take three counters off and then he can deal one damage. Untapping everything. I've used the Conch Horn again, probably digging for answers. And look, I've untapped all my sand silos, so maybe I'm planning something big. Ooh, and that's a huge Dwarven Catapult. Now, Dwarven Catapult and Storage Lands work off really, really well. So I'm playing a huge Dwarven Catapult, basically forcing, um, forcing my opponent here to first use his Spore Flower to make sure he doesn't get any damage and then everything is dead. So this is looking really, really dire for Gideon after this uh, very successful cast of Dwarven Catapult. I've wiped the entire board on his side and that means next turn I can swing in for 14 damage and he only has two Balm of Restoration. So basically he needs another Spore Cloud or he is dead. Remember, he does play with four Spore Clouds, so there is a chance that he has a Spore Cloud in hand here. Playing a double Thalid and passing turn. Remember, I have the Goblin War Drums, so that would mean he can only block just one creature with two creatures because of Goblin War Drums. So that's probably why he decides to play a double Thalid and he's using his Night Soil. Because he's doing this, I now know that he does not have a Spore Cloud. Because if he had a Spore Cloud, he would need three mana open. So it looks like that he it looks like he's just activating the Night Soil twice and playing a Thali. Then at least he can block two creatures and he can activate his Balm of Restoration once, but I don't think it's enough. So he blocks my two Darylors. Then he takes six damage, prevents two of those, still gets four. Okay, that's it. That's <laughs> that's game. Man, these are complicated games. I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep you up to speed here, but uh, there's just so much happening. And this is really Fallen Empire and Magic for you. It's all about combat. It's all about calculating triggers. It's actually pretty advanced Magic the Gathering. Anyway, this was game number one, a victory for me, but we still have more to go. We haven't uh, covered the whole match yet. We are now going to game number two. First, we're going to sideboard and then we're going to go to game number two. Game number two. And um, you could you could really see well in the game one what I meant early in the deck tech is what can happen when you've got this standstill situation, this fog machine. You saw Gideon just with, I believe he had two forests or three forests at a certain point and how long he could actually stall the game. So um, I'm, I'm a little bit afraid for that in game two as well, but we'll see what's going to happen here. And look at that. Gideon is now finding his land drops and there's a Thorn Talit and a Fungal Bloom for him and a Conch Horn on my side of the board, followed by another Conch Horn. And as you can see, he's just putting his um, counters there on the Thorn Talit, attacking with it right now, putting me on 18 and playing a shield here and that shield you can i believe pay two mana and tap to give target creature plus oh plus two and you might think why would you put that in your deck well actually 
Exactly, it works against the Io pile, but not now because Gideon does not have enough mana open to activate it. So I've been able to use my Io pile to quickly kill the Spore Flower, but it's followed up by a Spore Cloud by Gideon here, passing turn to me, playing the Ebon Stronghold, coming into play tapped. So I, that probably means I've splashed in some black creatures from my sideboard. Tapping two blue, blue to play another Conchhorn. I believe that's Conchhorn number three already. And look at that, Gidon is finding a lot of land and that means that he can start using the Fungal Bloom and he's first using the Shield. That means his Spore Flower is now an 0-3 creature and it's going to be much harder for me to get rid of it with a Dwarven Catapult. And remember, he also has the Fungal Bloom to put additional counters on it. Ooh, and this is interesting. This is the Hamrit Shaman and Hamrit Shaman is a pretty cool card. At least, I, let me put it this way. I think it's cool. It comes from my sideboard. It's two blue and two and I can pay one blue to tap target green creature. So I can basically use this to tap every creature that Gideon has because they're all green. So that's pretty cool. And I'm following up my play with a Hummerit Spawning Bat, not that impressive. And we now already see three counters on the Spore Flower uh, on Gideon's side. So this could be um, a long match. And he's playing a Thelonite Druid. And let's see what's going to happen next here. Playing a Sand Silo, so that's that Storage Land. So I can start saving up. Now, interesting thing here is one of the things that we checked and I remember in this match is that Gideon asked like, when I'm using my Thelonite Druid to create, to make two, three creatures out of my forests, or they then consider the green creatures. Um, and actually we checked the modern, the current Oracle text and it doesn't say. So it doesn't, it didn't specify if they were green. So we just assume they're just colorless if he turns them into two, three creatures. If you know the answer to this, please let us know because in this particular matchup, it is relevant because if they are colorless, I cannot use my Hummer at Shaman. If they're not colorless, I can actually, or if they're green, I can use my Hummer at Shaman and pay one blue to actually tap them down. So in this particular case, because we couldn't find it, it didn't specify that they were green. We just assumed that they had no color. And let's see. I am tapping his Thelonite Druid, it seems, on his end step. Tapping his Spore Flower. And uh, probably going to attack here. Why not? It is a 2-1 creature. And the question is, is he going to use his counters to prevent the damage? No, he's just going to take it for this time. Going to 18. Why not? He's got enough life. And playing a Tidal Influence. Now, Tidal Influence is a very interesting card. Uh, it's an enchantment for one blue and two. It comes into play with a tight counter on it, and that means that all my blue creatures get minus two, minus O. Oh. Every turn you put a tight counter on it, when it has three tight counters on there, all my blue creatures get plus two, plus O. Oh. When it has four tight counters, you remove all the tight counters again, and it starts all over again. So obviously my tactic here is that I'm hoping to have a certain point in the game where I have a lot of 1-1 creatures, blue Kamarit tokens because of my Hummer spawning bad. And then if I can attack at the right time, all those creatures will get plus two plus O. And yes, it's a very far-fetched combo, I know, but that is kind of living the dream. Um, what you see, by the way, is every time on my end step, I'm trying to use my Hummer Shaman to tap a few creatures on the side of uh, Gideon. Now on my end step, I'm actually sacrificing uh, the War Machine, uh, the Voldalian War Machine, and that means I'm getting three 1-1 one, one Kamarit tokens. So you see them coming into play right now. So I'm using my Hummerit Spawning Bat for two blue and one to sack my um, Voldalian War Machine and to gain tokens. So it's, it's quite nice. Right now you can see what I want to do. Obviously my big problem here is the Spore Flower. Look at that. Playing a Spore Cloud, making matters even worse for me. That means that my creatures are going to stay tapped. Now I am paying a lot, playing a deep spawn here. That is pretty cool. And you're probably wondering why are you playing a deep spawn when your opponent has a, an active spore flower on the board? Well, what I want to do with the with the deep spawn is sack it to my Humber spawning bed, and that's going to give me eight Kamarit tokens. Now, obviously, these tokens are pretty useless 
as long as uh, Hyvion can keep using his Spore Flower. So what I'm hoping for is I'm hoping to draw into um, a Dwarven Catapult, but the problem with the Dwarven Catapult is, and look at that, I'm having to put two cards in my graveyard because of the Deep Spawn. Um, the problem of the Dwarven Catapult is that uh, Gideon has two of those shields on his Spore Flower, so his Spore Flower is a 0-5 creature, so I need to play a huge Dwarven Catapult in order to um, deal with uh, Gideon in the or Gideon's uh, Spore Flower. So in the meantime, I'm attacking with my Deep Spawn and he's using his Spore Flower counters to get a Fog Effect and then recharging it in, on my end step with his Fungal Bloom. So um, just to make a long story short, this game is shut at the moment. This game is shut. Uh, Gideon can use his Fungal Bloom to make uh, endless counters on his Spore Flower and he for each three counters on his Spore Flower, he has a Fog Effect. So I need to get rid of the Spore Flower. That is my main goal here. And end of turn, I'm sacking my Deep Spawn. So you can now see I have 11 Comrade Tokens and I also have the Goblin War Drum. So all my Comrade Tokens have Menace right now. So that means they need to be blocked by two or more creatures. And on the right time, I can use my Tidal Influence, give them all plus two plus O oh, and attack with 11, three, one, Menace, Kamade tokens. That's kind of living the dream. My big problem here is that Gideon has his fog machine online. So I first have to deal with the fog machine. Attacking here for six, kind of forcing Gideon um, to use his spore flower. And as you can see, he's tapping six mana because that equals uh, three uh, counters on the spore flower because of the fungal bloom. So to make a long story short, we are going nowhere. This game is completely shut. And my tactic right now, of course, I don't know what Gideon's tactic is at this point in the game, but my tactic at this point in, in the game is to try to save up as much mana as I can with the storage land and then just play a huge Dwarven Catapult. And end step, I'm tapping all his creatures with my um, Homerit Shaman. Just attacking here for six. And he's using his Fungal Bloom again, so nothing really happens. Putting a tight counter on there. Okay, so I'm attacking with the Darylor because there was actually a counter on my Tidal Influence. Remember, with one counter, all my blue creatures get minus two, minus O. Oh. And um, that there's really... This is really a standstill here. This is kind of what I was afraid of because this could take a very, very long time. Of course, uh, it's all in, um, it's going to benefit uh, Gideon because what he's going to do is going to play out more and more uh, cards like Elvish Farmer, uh, Thalit, uh, Thorn Thalit, and all these creatures, they all get counters during their upkeep and all these creatures, when you take three counters off, something happens. Most of them just make a 1-1 one, one green creature. But, you know, for some of them you gain life, for others, um, you know, you, you get to do a damage. And what you see now is I'm just going to keep attacking and you're probably wondering why. I just want to make sure that at least he has to use his fog effect. Um, you know, that's that's all I can do really. Just use my Homerage Shaman to tap down all of his green creatures and keep attacking and just making sure that he needs all his mana to keep making... Um, to keep making uh, making counters, basically. If you if you can't follow uh, this game, by the way, it's completely understandable because this is just kind of crazy. So let me know in the comments below if something's unclear, and I'll try to explain it in the comments. And I'm casting a Homerit Warrior. It doesn't really change anything to the game. It is a bit of a pity for me because I have my combo on the board that I kind of, you know, that was my intention when I built uh, the deck. Uh, but I can't really make use of it because of that endless fog effect that Gideon has with that Spore Flower. I'm counting my land, so that probably means that I have a Dwarven Catapult in hand. But remember, what Dwarven Catapult does, for people that don't know, again, it's a card you don't see often, it's one red and X. And each... Uh, mana you pay, it deals X damage to all the creatures of the opponent divided equally rounded down. So for example, he now has five creatures on the board. 
Uh, if I play a Dwarven Catapult of 5, it means it's going to deal 1 damage to each of his creatures. Now remember, I want to kill the Spore Flower, but the Spore Flower has 5 toughness. And there's a Feral Thalite on the side of Gideon. Beautiful creature, 6-3. And I'm tapping that creature down in his, both of his Druids. So now he has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 creatures on the board. So that means I have to deal, I have to tap... 31 mana if I want to deal 5 damage to the Spore Flower. In other words, it's not going to happen. Make a long story short, it's not going to happen. So attacking now again, forcing him to use his Spore Flower. But he still has more than enough counters. Going to 6 counters there. And remember, those Thalites and Elvish Farmers also have some counters on them, so he can take them off to make even more counters. And this is a very, this is a big concern for me, the Thorn Thalite. Thorn Thalite, uh, when Thorn Thalite has three counters on it, it can actually deal one damage to any target. So he can start using his Thorn Thalite to kind of uh, mow away my Kamarit tokens. And there's not much I can do. Attacking here with a Daralor. And it's actually Gideon who's making, I believe, two Talits and blocking that on the Daralor instead of wanting to use his Spore Flower here. He's really in a luxury position. I mean, look at him putting all the counters on everything he has. If I can get rid of the Spore Flower, then I stand a chance, but I just don't see a way how. Remember, there are no Swords to Plowsiers in this format, no Terror. The best removal that I have is an IO pile that deals 2 damage. If I would play with white, I could have a Hand of Justice out, but I, I'm not playing with white, so I don't have the Hand of Justice. And, I mean, things are looking very, very dire for me. I guess I'm not sure why I'm still playing. I guess I'm playing to hopefully find some way out of this. But in all honesty, I don't think there is. Especially with that Thorn Talit on the board, because he can start killing my creatures. Starting with the Homerit Shaman. I mean, Homerit Shaman is usually an, an extremely powerful creature, but not right now. Attacking with all the Comerit tokens, since he's simply using his Spore Flower again. Well, not all the Comerits attacking with six of those, keeping five untapped. Passing turn again. I wonder, I wonder if I want to finish this or maybe just continue to a third game. But let's see. Maybe I can find some out that I'm not thinking about right now. And yeah, I think this is it. It looks like I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm quitting. Because really, there is no out for me at this point. The game is locked. So it's a bit of a pity because I did have my combo on the board. On the other hand, this is how Gideon's deck wants to work. So, I mean, I can only congratulate Gideon. He's doing what he wants to do and he's doing it very successfully. So very, very well played, Gideon. Um, maybe we're going to change our sideboards a little bit and we'll catch up with you in game number three. Game number three. And man, this matchup is a thriller. Let's see, Evan Stronghold for me, I'm on the play, of course, after losing game number two and a basic force here for Gideon, at least not a one drop, so that's good news for me. Let's see what I can do. And I see that my life total, for some reason, I've put the dice just out of the screen, so I'm sorry for that, that's pretty stupid, but I'm still on 20 at least for now, and Gideon's playing an Elvish Farmer turn two, so that's pretty good, and I've got a Conch Horn on the board playing an Io Pile, so that Io Pile can possibly take care of the Elvish Farmer, but I don't have to do it now, of course. I can just wait and see what Gideon's going to play. Playing another Thalit and a Fungal Bloom. This is a very good turn number three for Gideon here. That Fungal Bloom is really a problem. Question is, what am I going to do? Using the Io Pile now, killing the Elvish Farmer, tapping two more, finding another Conch Horn. And those Conch Horns, I mean, they may seem like not that important but i can tell you they're very important attacking here with one thali dropping to 19 and step activating the conch horn and the conch horn kind of allows me to find the right type of land so now i'm finding a mountain and i've got all the colors that i have in my deck 
so I can play out all the spells that I have. Tapping five here, playing a Homerid Warrior. But I mean, look at Gideon. He's got Fungal Bloom. He's got a Thorn Thalid. He's got a regular Thalid. I mean, he can start putting some pressure on the board and maybe get enough counters on his Thorn Thalid to kill my Homerid Warrior or force me to use his ability because you can give it Hexproof for one blue, but then it taps itself and it doesn't untap for a whole turn. So it's not an ideal situation. And playing another Ebon Stronghold. Remember, they come into play tap, playing an Io Pile, so I can at least get rid of one more creature. First, I'm attacking with the uh, Warrior. Gideon's taking the damage. And he now has three counters on his Thalid, so that means he can make a 1 1 Suprolling token. That's what he's doing right now. Finding land drop number four, so he can use the Fungal Bloom twice right now. First, he's going to attack. Why not? Dealing five damage. I'm going to drop to 14 here. What can I do? If I can play... Am I doing that right now? Sacking both of my Ebon Strongholds. Oh, playing a Dwarven Catapult for one and eight. That means I'm dealing eight damage, so two damage to each of his creatures. And that, that's enough to kill everything. I'm just wiping his entire board. And here, once again, you can see how extremely powerful Dwarven Catapult is. And it works together so well with the um, with the Evan Strongholds, with the Sacklands, because you get double amount of mana. Putting a Darylor on the board as well. So I'm putting a lot of pressure on the board now. Let's see if I can hit him for seven next turn. That means he's going to drop to four measly lives. Let's see if I can get that to work. Oh, a Spore Cloud. Well done, Gideon. And remember that game where he was almost dead, but not dead. So maybe maybe he can, he can stabilize. Who knows? Playing a Thalonite Druid. Am I going to take care of that Thalonite Druid with an Io Pile? The problem is here he can use his shield to and tap to give his Druid plus O plus two. So the IO pile alone is not enough. Using the IO pile, using the shield, playing another IO pile, and that's enough. So needing two cards to get rid of one, but in this case, I think it's worth it. Passing turn here, he's playing an Elvish Farmer. He can use his Fungal Bloom to at least put one counter on his Elvish Farmer, but I think, I mean, he's still on 11, so he can take one hit from the Darylor and the Warrior, dropping to four. And first he's putting his shield on his Elvish Farmer to protect it. That makes sense. Although he doesn't have to do that. He can just wait until his end step. On the other hand, he can now block his war the Warrior. That means he only takes four damage from the Darylor. Oh, a Deep Spawn. This is cool. So I can use my Deep Spawn, hopefully to win. That would be pretty awesome. Let's see if he, on if, I mean, if he finds a Spore Cloud or something, He's passing turn, having to put two in the graveyard because of the upkeep cost of Deep Spawn. And I'm thinking now, do I want to attack with everything? Because maybe he's got a Spore Cloud. I'm actually only attacking with the Deep Spawn, and he's playing the Spore Cloud. That means that the Deep Spawn remains tapped next turn. And here you can see, I mean, Spore Cloud is just a very, very strong fog effect. And there's the third counter on the Elvish Farmer. That means he can take three counters off to make a 1-1 one, one Thalid. And be, the Elvish Farmer can also sacrifice, uh, uh, sorry, a Suproling, can also sacrifice a Suproling to gain two life. So, I mean, Gideon is still on seven. He's not dead yet. I'm on 12, I believe. Can Gideon stabilize here? That's the big question. He's playing a shield again. And he's actually equipping that. And that means that he can block the Darylor now. So I'm attacking with both. He blocks the Darylor. And he blocks the other one, maybe with the Thalid. Ah, and using it in combination with his Io Pile to try to kill my Homerid Warrior. But what I'm doing in response, I'm activating the Hexproof ability of the Homerid Warrior. And that means that the, that it cannot be targeted. And the Io Pile fizzles. 
It does mean that next turn my Hummered Warrior doesn't untap. Man, it's really nice to see me using that uh, Hummered Warrior uh, Hexproof effect. Playing another, playing a Conchorn as well, by the way, and there is another shield. But what Gideon really needs right now is is a Spore Flower to just get that um, to get that. Uh, that fog effect going and he's playing another shield and look at that so right now the elvish farmer has a toughness of eight so it can actually block my deep spawn putting two cards in my graveyard again because of the deep spawn cost and playing a goblin war drums i'm gonna win this one goblin war drums giving my creatures menace Gideon stepped out this is it oh boom I'm sorry, sorry, Kivion, but it's just great to see Deep Spawn, um, you know, winning a game for me here. And I'm really happy with that Goblin War Drum, that top deck. Now, do remember, because of those Conch Horns, I was able um, to kind of find the right cards at the right moment. So I really think that games where I, I draw into a lot of Conch Horns kind of give me the biggest chance to actually win. So I'm really happy here. I've got my um, second win of this Fallen Empire tournament. So, so far I've lost one match and I've won two matches. Um, thank you for watching another episode uh, of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. Now, if you want to support the channel, uh, you can do so by subscribing. If you're not a subscriber yet, that really helps. Uh, of course, you can like it. If you like the video, you can leave a comment if you have any questions because, I mean, these matches were complex. These matches were complex and you don't see these cards often. So feel free to uh, to ask anything about game mechanics. It does always help when you put a little timestamp in your comments so I can I can look it up and I can, uh, I can then explain what actually happened right then and there. Um, you can also uh, support the channel financially. You can become a Patreon of Timmy Talks. There's probably a little info card appearing right now. You can click on it and that info card will take you um, straight to the Timmy Talks Patreon page and you can support the channel. Talking about the patrons, let's go to the end scroll. Let's check out all the patrons of Timmy Talks.